Good morning. Good morning and happy new year, I guess. Wow. Wow. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing on this lovely, slightly chilly, freezing uh, Wednesday morning? How are we all? Um, so let's see what's going on. Let's see if anybody is here. Um, it's nice to see everybody finally. Um, first live for me of this year, which is great. Um, really excited as well for today's projects we've got some really 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 beautiful um bundles and kits coming up um so yeah i'll just give you all a little moment to come in to say hi um and see how we're all doing um harold hi rachel from a cold barrow yeah it's really quite well i think i've, I've said before anyone who knows me knows how much i love snow um and <clears throat> So we had snow for all of three minutes in Bristol on Friday, but I was so excited. Um, it was proper snow coming down. It didn't settle or pitch. Um, it just kind of dissolved. But I asked Alice what the weather was doing and they were like, it's snowing. <laughs> so I was super happy about that. Um, good morning, Tina. How are we all? Have we all had a lovely Christmas, um, a lovely New Year? It, probably feels like ages away now doesn't it really because we're on the 10th of January already how are we already on the 10th of January what has happened what has happened to the to, already 10 days in uh good morning Mina how are you good morning Jan good morning Laura and all from Bro. I'll, I'll pop some of these happy uh these mornings on in a moment oh happy new year Jan thank you um yeah it's it's I'm, I'm <clears throat> I had a lovely break ish because I, I was kind of still doing stuff over the over the Christmas break because um, those of you who did the Christmas uh, bundle would know I did a couple of um, sessions with you um, but it is um, it's nice to get back to normal I'm not gonna lie or it's nice to have a little bit of normality back the kids are at school Tony's at work. I'm back to doing stuff and it's it's nice to have some sort of routine. Um, it's so cold today. It really is. It's really cold. It's actually warmer here today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was bitter. Um, morning. Meg the Sprocker says hi. Hi. Um, I live on an island off Barrow, so snow rarely settles. I have a question for you actually whilst we're here. What do you say when snow settles? Because in Bristol, so fun fact for you um I am I'm actually a born Londoner so I was born in Lewisham in London my dad's a Londoner my mum's Bristolian we moved back to Bristol we actually I actually grew up in Kent for the first sort of 11 years of my life um in Folkestone and then when we came back to Bristol you know I've, I've met my husband I've lived here for a long time shall we say um and I didn't realise, because I just listened to what people around me say, we always said, oh, the snow is pitching, which I thought was what we say when snow settles. But it apparently is just a Bristolian thing to say that snow has pitched. Um, I, I was out with um, some friends and it was snowing and I was like, oh, it's it's pitching. And they were from like um, up north and around all over. And they were like, no. <laughs> so I just wonder what you say. Um, very great Germany. Wow. We are going across the borders today, aren't we? Uh, Germany. We got, I just, did I just see New Zealand? New Zealand. Um, oh, wow lots of lovely lovely um all over the world so let's pop some of these up because it's lovely to see some of this so we've got um good morning oopsie hang on we've got good morning from rachel from a cold barrow good morning from tina good morning from mina uh good morning from Jan from a bright, bright and sunny but cold suburb. I think that's how I would describe Bristol, bright and cold and sunny. Um, Rachel lives off Barris with snow ready sales. Good morning from Elaine, Phoenix Creations, um, from Camille. Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Jen. Happy New Year. Happy, hello from a very great Germany. Hello from New Zealand. It's 11 p.m. over there. Wow. Hot, very hot. Wow. Um, hello. hello. Um, oh, sorry, I saw that one. Um, 
Oh my gosh. Uh, howdy and happy new year from Dawn in Texas. Amazing. I love that we've got everybody from everywhere. It's, it's, I think it's amazing. Um, uh, Trisha's morning, it's minus two here. Um, sorry, if anyone wants to know what I was holding up then, it's, it's actually nail polish remover. I'm just very quickly realised I had not removed my odd nail polish. I wouldn't have minded, but it was only on four fingers. Um, <laughs> so uh, good morning from Anne um good morning from angela in grand town on spain it's been down to minus six wow that must have been so cold um it also snowed last night oh wow i'm gonna try and say your name ananthi from india oh wow happy new year um it's so rachel's i've always said settled even my parents who originate from the midlands um in glen roth's scotland the sun is peeking through the clouds i heard of pitching snow up here but it's dreek with a little mizzle when i was out with meg oh i love that um oh your parents and oh this is lovely it's lovely to see everybody good morning jackie oh this is amazing so it's so lovely to see everybody here um okay so oh that's awesome yeah we just apparently it's it's it, apparently everybody else calls it settling everyone else will say did the snow settle but <laughs> we're Estonians, we like to be a bit, we like to be a bit different, and we like to say, did it put, did it pitch? Um, so yeah, just it just amused me because it was, it, I find it funny and interesting that I was never aware that different places have different sayings for things. I know that sounds really naive and stupid, but like I didn't think that that pitching would be bespoke to Bristol only. You know, I I assumed everybody did it anyway let's look at what we're making this morning shall we today we're doing a really lovely easy fun project um now this comes under a few different names well it can be known as the i know it as the goddess technique so it's the goddess bracelet we call it the goddess bracelet or it can be called the um i, I believe kitty has um done something similar before she calls it the crisscross so it comes under many names, but I tend to call it the um, goddess technique. I think it's what it's more known for. Bear with me one moment while I just do something. I just notice something. Um, but the kits that we have got today for this technique are absolutely awesome. If I do say so myself, I believe I feel that uh, Totally Beats have excelled themselves with this one. So I'll show you it again. Snow's lying, we say in five. Do you know what I mean? It's funny, isn't it? Like snow's lying, snow's pitching. I messaged my friend. In fact, I messaged every single friend I know um, on Monday to say that it was snowing all for the whole two seconds of it. And my friend from Cheshire was like, oh, was it settling? And I was like, nah, it's not pitching. Um, <laughs> anyway, let me show you up close. This is the um, necklace or the piece that we'll be making today. This goes all the way around the neckline to the back. Um, I will show you this uh, down on the board in a moment. Love the colours on the necklace. Oh, Angela, you wait. There's so many colourways. It's incredible. Um, and so basically, these kits, you've got in a real uh, bargain with these today. I am going to place this onto my board and I'm going to show you this. We call it sticking. That's interesting. Sticking. Is the snow sticky? I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense. Most of them, like settling, it all makes sense. But obviously, we, we went with we went with pitching. But you know, it it just amuses. It, I just find it fascinating the different cultures from everybody as well. Right, I'm just going to pop my um, camera across and then see what we can see. There we have it. Let's get this into shot. There we go. So we have the crisscross design. Now, this necklace in particular has been sort of adapted a tiny little bit because we've got two different sizes in the kit of um, or, or bundles kits um, today. And we have two different sizes of beads and two different sizes of jump rings. So it enables you to get this really lovely sort of statement collar type of look. And, you know, we do just adjust it slightly to be able to get that. I don't know why it's looking so shadowy today. 
Um, but uh, we'll have a little look at that in a moment. Um, so this is a technique, as I said, really, really lovely. But before we do anything, let's have a little look at the kits, see what we have available. I do also have some sample sort of sections here. Oh, one just completely came off, your monkey. Um, let me just pick this one up. We have different colorways. Um, there was there was another color on it. I literally picked it up and it all just came off. So you can see we've got lots of lovely colors. Yeah, yes, um, Camille. Yes, yeah, so I do know that I I believe um, Kitty has said she's demoed it before, but I just thought it's such a lovely technique, um, and that's why we wanted to show the sort of the necklace variation of it as well. So you can actually create a necklace, a bracelet. Um, so let me just go in and share you the screen. So yeah, there's also a pink and silver, which literally, <laughs> literally just. Because I didn't secure the end of the sample bit, it all just came off, but it's fine. I will show you it all in a moment. Maybe we'll use the pink to demo with. So let's share and have a little look um, at what we've got going on. Okay. So hopefully you can hear me still. Let me know if you can't hear me. Okay. So you can see here that we've got the, let's see if we can shrink you, <coughs> the goddess jewellery, as we have described it, which is lovely. So, as I said, we know it as the, I know it as the goddess um, technique. So I've got here the um, YouTube tutorial that you'll be able to watch this back on, which is obviously what we're recording now. And then you have all of these lovely different colorways. Now, as you can see, they are currently on offer at the moment. So today's special will be you basically the, what you get in these kits are incredible. So let me go over to the one that I've got in front of me right now. So you actually get so you get glass jade glitter beads, six mil and eight mil, and you get it in two colors. So um, I don't know if it will show me both the colors that you get it with um uh let's have a little look i'm not quite I'll, i've got the kits here anyway so i can show you but you get it with this beautiful kind of watermelon color which obviously i said is the color i've gone with um and you also get two bags of jump rings one in a size seven mil now these are outer diameters so a seven and a nine mil so seven and nine outer diameter so the nine mils you know are one of the new sizes that we've had in which means that we can use this, the slightly bigger beads so it gives us a bit more scope with it these are the nine mils we used in here and then the uh smaller the sevens have been used um towards the smaller bead section at the back so you will get lobster clasp crib beads clots tiger tail um as well as your two bags of jump rings in two different sizes which are seven and your nines which on the inner diameter are your five and sevens um, and then you have your glass jade, glass jade glitter bead, six mil and eight mil, and you get them in two different sizes. So um, I'm going to try and just get my stuff together to show you what I've got here. Um, and then I can show you some of the different colorways. Um, as a technique, it's a really lovely, easy technique. You just have to make sure you follow the pattern because if you don't and i'll show you up close in a moment what can happen is this where you find yourself i'll show you close in a moment if you put the beads on the same size you mess it up and if you don't see it then you'll know you'll um it will uh jump up and show you so let's have a look at some of these other colorways that we have here bear with me one moment There we go. Ah, there they are. So we have the lovely watermelon colour. And then we have the blues in with this as well. So I'm just going to see if I can switch. This. Ah, I can. Oh, that's new. So the blue. So the first kit that's up on the screen now, you get the watermelon colour. And then you get the blue and you'll get them in the uh, two different sizes, the seven mil and the nine mil. So, um, sorry, the six mil, which are the smaller and the eight mil, which are the larger. 
So you get these these four strands of gemstones, or, or not gemstones, or glass uh, jade glitter beads, plus you'll get your two bags of jump rings, and you'll get your findings to go with it as well. Um, and so you'll see here, these are the gunmetal um, jump rings, okay? And you get the findings to match. So that is set number one. Then let's look at what else we've got. So let me switch back over to here and then we can go back so as i said at the moment 9.99 great 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 there are lots and lots in that but bundle for that so next one which is a sample i've got here and on this one you get i've got some here and here two different colorways i tried to make i was starting to just sort of blend them together so you can see you don't have to stick to the same color so the two colors that you have for this <clears throat> you have the um, lovely sort of blue that have the blue and the silvery tone and then this lovely almost peridot lime pastely green it's really lovely with a gold sort of shimmer to it really really pretty again you get these in the two different sizes six mil and eight mil so you get six mils in both colors of this uh color and eight mils in both colors as well plus you then get for these the lovely gold colored jump rings you then have let me go back to the screen I'm just reading your messages sorry um me and Missy, I did the crystal ones too yeah replying all kits were amazing oh rusty would be so twinkly in this design Bought a jump ring separately to make a rainbow bracelet with miracle beads just on my crafting table. Oh, amazing, Sue. Well, again, this is great because we've got new size jump rings that you wouldn't have had um, at the time. We've only just gotten these um, nine mil jump rings in. So this one here is, I love this, Mahito and Pink. Um, so we've got this beautiful, glittery, um, aquamarine greeny kind of color really pretty um and the size that we have on this one we have them here so let me switch this back for the two colorways for you on this one remember that each kit is 9.99 at the moment full price is 10.99 so on this one this is the full kit that you get here you get black um findings the black color jump rings you get this really lovely like sort of softer tone of watercolor so the first one was quite uh, bright vivid this is more of a pastel watercolor really really beautiful and again the smaller versions and then you also get this lovely almost like aquamarine icy jady color really really pretty okay is this any better is that any better because it's it's looking okay from what I can see here. Um, let me just check on the YouTube, see if it's any any better. Let me see if I can find it. Um, um, just put that down. Um, just trying to see if I can find it, um, see how it's looking. So, still not focusing. Give it a moment. It's not. Let me see it now. I'm just trying to go into the. Sorry, I'm literally just trying to go into it on here so we can see. Uh, hang on, it's not focusing here either at the moment. Hang on. Give it a moment. It's a little blurry. Hang on, it's give it a second now. Hopefully it'll focus in. I think it might be because there's a few things on the screen. Um I think that that's a, yeah, it's a little tiny bit blurry at the moment because it's not sharpening up. Let's try it like that. Hopefully that's a little bit better. But we can see it on YouTube that it's not dark. But I can see it's just going a little bit fuzzy, but hopefully that'll clear up a little bit now um, and it'll start to I'm just looking at it on the screen as well. 
just to check myself, seeing if that's getting any better. Sometimes it gets a little bit deevery if there are things blocking its view. So I'm just going to see if I can do a quick switch. Whoops. Let's see if this makes it any better. Okay, so we'll just give it a second, let it switch, um, and then we'll see what it does. Maybe I'll have to ask uh, Look, Hunt the Cells for another camera. So I'm holding this here. It's still a little bit blurry, but I don't know why. Yeah, I'm checking both screens. So I do apologize. It's clearing up a little bit. It could be the, the transmission, maybe, because it definitely is um, more focused on my screen now. It's too dark to focus, Grem. Yeah, definitely gremlins in the room. Definitely. I don't know why I feel like putting my hands down like this is going to make a big difference. But in my head, I feel it will. Let's try adding a little bit of light and seeing if that makes it any better for you. So let me just grab my little trusty light and see if this can make it any better. Oops. Let's see if that's any better for you. Is that better? It's a bit too bright, probably. Is that any better? I won't spend ages because I'm still just showing you what we've got, but we'll suss it out. Hopefully that's a bit better. Oh, she's having a moment now. I can see it. I think it's the transmission, you know, because I can see it kind of blurring. But on the screen here, it's looking really clear. So I think it might just be the transmission. So I am sorry about that. It could be the, like you say, gremlins, a little bit of snow in the air upsets um, everybody. Can everyone else see it? OK, though, who's watching on Facebook and stuff? Because I, that is very, very clear on my image. So I do think that that is unfortunately a transmission thing at the moment. But it shouldn't affect um, the actual technique itself too much. But we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. We'll see if it's a problem. Um, OK. So basically, uh, yes, where were we? We had um, the, the green and the black. So again, this comes, you've got this really lovely kind of pastel. Yeah. It is what on on Facebook. OK. All right. I'll uh, I'll have to have a little look at that. Um, it may just be some gremlins at the moment, but we'll, I'll have a, I'll have a little check. Um, OK, but basically we have the muted sort of not muted, but the more pastel tone of the watercolours. Um, and this one comes with this lovely soft green colour and the black findings. So we have that one. So there's this one here, which is the mojito and pink with the black jump rings and then what else we have there are so many so i'm going to speed this up now otherwise we're never going to get the demo done um but the next ones that we've got are these gorgeous uh come on Max, there we go. gorgeous gorgeous um orange it's like a lovely sort of rose goldy color with this lovely rose gold copper glitter very much like sunstone um, and then a sort of a, a paler, almost rose quartzy colour. And again, I'll switch this back here. I don't know why the pitch is blurry. I'm really sorry. The only thing I can think of is that it's transmitting in a. It's try. It's got to be to do with the. Let me try this. Let me know if that's any better. Um. Let me see if this is any better. I'm trying to change the video settings. Seeing if they bear with me. And on this one, it's not letting me. I'll try it, dropping it down to that. Let me know if that's any better. Um, but for the most, get through this as well. I'm not going to be able to show you the demo. But basically, we have Peach and Ice, which again, oops, is this beautiful rose goldy colors with the rose gold can't see anything on the close-up now website and you are fine okay 
okay can you see the i'm just trying to show you the website in a moment can you see the website okay let me i'll focus on me in a moment um i will come back to this one but i'll just hang on come on oh I'll turn that one off at the moment. Um, okay, so this is the rose, and then we have just two more very quickly. We have oh, I'm, oh no, I didn't. We've got the. Um, we'll come back. The website is clear. Okay, cool. Uh, we've got the lovely red and lilac, which is this beautiful red tone, and we also then have like a really lovely, almost like soft amethyst color. I'm going to have to try and show you on this one very quickly. I've just tried to reset the camera. Oh, nope. I hid myself. We'll see how this one comes up. But we have this really lovely, I don't know if you can see it. You are fine, your table and hands. Nope. How about hands now? Oh, hi, David. Oh, dear. Um, I hope you're okay. Um, okay, so we've got this lovely kind of love, soft amethyst colour with a golden tone to it. These have the champagne gold jump rings with it. And then last but not least, we have a little bit of pink. And I'm just going back over to the YouTube. Let's see where we're at. And then finally, we have the pinks. So we have this really lovely kind of pinky rose quartz with a nice sort of hot baby pink maybe colour here. Try it in another light. I can, it, it's, is that better? I've come back onto it now. I can, uh, there are no more lights at the moment. Um, and, and looking on the screen, it looks, okay, phew. <laughs> okay. Um, we have the um, slightly sort of soft pastel purple as well and okay cool we're all okay now oh phew um and then we have the uh silver jump rings to go with that gosh that was stressful um <laughs> love technology isn't it amazing <laughs> um okay so those are the, the um those are the kits that you have again i'll just quickly show you over here the um screen share and then this one here well, you don't want me to do it. There we go. And then we have the lovely, these lovely pink and mauve. So again, everything in the kits, oh, some of these have the actual colours here. So you can see there you've got the colours. Um, so have a little look. You've got a lovely mixture of choices there. You get four strands of your glass jade glitter bead, beads in the six mil and eight mil. So you get two in um, two different colourways, one in each size. So you'll get... Um, four strands of beads in total, two bags of gem rings, a five, um, a seven and a nine mil, your lobster class, your print beads, clots, and your tiger tails. Everything you need to make two necklaces or four bracelets. So a really, really awesome, um, awesome deal there. So we're going to get rid of this. So stop sharing. Hopefully we're okay here now. We can, uh, Sort of we, we shouldn't be there we go so we've got left side of the screen by the bags with more light it's now okay i can't really add any more light other than that i don't have another light to hand and i am believe it or not sat in a room with two sat in a room with two um hopefully that's a bit better with two fluorescent tubes above me so i've got fluorescent tubes above me here fluorescent tubes above me here so like i can't get a room anymore lit um but we'll have to just see what we can do oh camille you still have some of the beads amazing okay so what i wanted to talk about was just the technique itself so the two different size jump it's all quite clear now <laughs> um stop okay why what's happened okay what's happened oh stop okay but don't you can't panic me with a message like that and then not not do anything okay 
so let's go with i haven't done the pink so let's go i did do the pink but it's kind of oh okay cool cool do you panicked me okay so shall we go with these lovely pinks and purples that we've got here um and the silver because i haven't done anything with those just yet i had but it kind of um it ran away as such so i have the silver jump rings um and i have silver findings and i have the tight tail so should we go ahead i'm back in glorious color ah, I, I genuinely i don't know what happened there i can only apologize that's because i got overconfident with the hi happy new year <laughs> okay cool we're all here that's the main thing so one of my top tips when you're making anything like this i will <clears throat> just show you the technique itself but i want to talk through the um <clears throat> the necklace <coughs> excuse me so the necklace itself starts off with smaller jump rings and uh beads as you can see and then we gravitate down and we start to um add two different sizes to a certain section and then the main centerpiece itself good morning joanne i feel like you've just missed all of the drama trying to get good light trying to see what we're doing but we're here we're here you came at the right point uh happy new year to you too joanne meg stood in the ipad and sent it so i had to type the rest of the message <laughs> i love that oh uh you gotta love animals um on my desk which i can't show you right now because it's a mess i had a my son doesn't like double decker chocolate bars but i do so he had brought two in and savannah those of you who know savannah the french bulldog has got the devil in her this morning so far she has run out with one of my little um flippy up uh octopuses you know like uh like this one of these she found one on the floor and she just pegged it so i grabbed that off of her then i had to pluck a bead out of her mouth she just has this way of grabbing something and running you know she's got something so I saw her run and I was like, what have you got? She's only gone and got one of my double decker bars. And I was like, where did you get that? I must have knocked it on the floor. And then when I went to sit down here, I discovered all my stuff on the floor. So no, no, no. She jumped on my chair, onto my desk, walked and got one. Devil in her. Um, <laughs> we got these jump rings in the Christmas bundle. Yeah, you would have got some in the, in the bundle. Yeah, definitely. Um, it depends if you've used them in other projects. It does take quite a few of the jump rings up, as you can tell, but you have enough there to make two two full necklaces or four bracelets, which I think is great. So I will I will actually, I think I'll show you how we do the actual necklace. I won't get the whole piece done, but I'll hopefully get half of it done. Once you get a project going, it's stuff is actually very easy, but just don't make mistakes, as I pointed out earlier. It's very easy if you get overconfident and you go too fast. Where's the... Uh, sample bit on there it is what can happen i will show you on this piece here is this happened because i didn't check and so i would then have to undo all of this to fix that so it's one of those where you need to check it and make sure you don't make mistakes the other thing you definitely need to do as well is you need to make sure that you don't um that your jump rings are open properly and also what is great is a macrame board excuse my mind's a bit dirty and grubby but it doesn't matter which side it is um a, a macrame board um a bigger one's probably better if you're doing the necklace but for now this will do it's just really great to have a um, like a tension point so what i would say when we get started is we want to open our jump rings and we want to prep them so by that i mean i'm going to take my pliers i'm going to take them she says well, where are you i'm going to blame this on savannah causing havoc on my desk um i am going to find both my pliers hmm or maybe i won't maybe i'm not supposed to aha there they are i got them okay and i am going and this is really really important and there's two reasons for this being so important i say this every time we do a jump ring demo but if your jump rings are not perfectly closed which nine times out of ten they won't be it's standard with any jump rings you get from anywhere 
you need to go ahead and close these properly. Now, you need to make sure when you close them as well, that you close them really securely because the way that it, the nature of the design, if there's the tiniest of gaps, one of these beading threads will go through it and it will mess your design up. So you have to make sure taking your pliers, let me just get my paper back. I'll do it on one of the larger ones so you'll be able to see it nice and clearly on a darker color, sorry. You can see it really nicely there actually. In fact, I might do the black anyway. So can you see, just that little wiggle got that jump ring nice and aligned, but you need to make sure, because if I look, I want to make sure that there's no way. So you may need to just almost kind of just gently push it together to make sure that there are no gaps. And you want to do that on all of your different size jump rings, large and small. So you can see that there. So you want to make sure that is close. Um, <laughs> oh, after all that, no problem. Thanks, sir. and we'll see you soon. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead, take some of my um, silvers, and I want to do the same with this. So I'm going to take those jump rings. I'm just going to get that jump ring there. You can see that one's quite open. So if I didn't open and close these properly, before we start, what will happen is the, the tiger tail will just literally slip through them. Now, I'm not going to tell you how many you need per piece. It, it will vary on whether you're making bracelets, whether you're making necklaces, and obviously what size you're going to be making. But I would just say, I would just go through them all. If you're intending on making <clears throat> these um, necklaces or bracelets, I would say have them all, or ma majority of them, ready and this will be on both sizes you just want them to be closed and aligned properly um because all of your jump rings will be closed for this so going around like so and keep going okay so it's quite quick and easy to get them prepped but it really does it is really a game changer. It will really save your time. And I will say, if they're kind of overlapped, because sometimes they overlap, like, say, this one. See how it's overlapped? So that isn't actually going to affect the tiger tail. But what that will affect is the um, visual look of it. And you can feel it as well when they're like this. But you won't, it won't, you jump ring, the, the tiger tail won't slip through that but you'll see it. So you'll probably see in the quick little sample bits I made up, you'll be able to visually see, let me show you, when you don't take that time, can you see, it's very obvious. First of all, you'll feel it. But second of all, you can see it. So when you've got that lovely statement design, you want to make sure that it's nice and visually pretty as well. So you can you can really see this. As I said, these are just little sample bits, but it's good for you to see what happens if you don't take that time um, and effort to get it right. So we want to go ahead and do those. Let me just pop that over there. And again, you'll see on this one, hopefully, <laughs> that I took that time to get these all nice and uniform. And then visually, you should be able to see that that looks so much nicer. So I'm going to pop that over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do all of, I'm not going to open and close all of these, but you, you really should. So what I'm going to do is have my two piles ready to go. Um, and then I want to take my beading thread. Now, I personally, because we're going to use quite a long amount, if you're, especially if you're doing a bracelet, um, sorry, a necklace is I want to take my necklace amount. So if you look at the top picture of me, I'm like kind of just going around my neck. Let me just switch over to me. And you can see, I'm just kind of bringing it to here. You see, I'm over allowing, I like to over allow. And then I'm going to cut and I'm going to take a second piece. Because you do need it to be slightly longer than your finished piece. 
because where you're bringing um, your where you're bringing it together, it can reduce slightly. Okay, so I'm going to take a second piece of uh, bean thread and I'm going to match it. Now you can just take one super long piece and of course you could double it over, but I quite like to do this. Okay, so going from complete starts as well, we want to, um, I need the findings. Where did the findings go? Come on, Laura. I literally just had them, didn't I? I literally just had, uh, my desk is playing those games with me again. I literally just had them, the findings for this. Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, come on. Has this happened to anybody else? Like everything just, you. I had it there. You had it there. <laughs> Here it to the side. So I'm going to take a clot, little sort of clot shell. And I'm going to take a crimp. Okay, I'm going to pop the clot on first onto both of the uh, wires there we go and then just drop that down a little bit I'm going to pop the beading thread uh, sorry the crimp bead on to both make sure it goes on both and then I'm just going to take my I'm going to take my crimping uh, pliers and I'm going to just place it into the little V of my crimping pliers and fold and then fold it around if you can and then i'm going to trim these down nice and close to the um crimp bring my clot up and close and then we can seal that with a jump ring and that's your finish nice and tidy <laughs> under the sheet of paper obviously Camille that's exactly where it was um well it was towards the edge um okay so I'm going to start my design off with the smaller beads I'm going to mix mine up I'm going to go with two different colors I'm going to mix up the large and the small so I'm going to take the pinkier color in the small tone size the uh six mil and I'm going to switch up to the uh other color okay so I'm going to start off by popping one of these beads onto both of the wires, bead and thread wires, and all the way down. Remember I said about using a beading board. So also, if you are planning on a necklace, I do recommend a necklace board because that really, really does help um, you to plot your design out and visually you can see. I'm going to take one of the beads and a, and a pin, like a needle in this case, apparently. I have a little pot of pins that I've sort of gotten. And then I'm going to just stab this through the end of that clot. Why am I using a, a bead as well? Because then that way there's no way that the it can go over the pin. Okay, so I do apologize about this slightly grubby beading mat it is unfortunately what I have so I've got the ends here one of my small jump rings okay and then I drop that all the way down and then I can separate out my wires and then I'm going to take one single wire and pop on a pink bead small bead and I'm going to take the end of both of my wires. So I do have a little cheaty way. So I know that the wire, the longer wire here is the sort of inside wire or the wire towards my right. And then the shorter wire is my left wire. So I've popped on my um, bead. I've popped on my jump ring. And I'm going to pop a bead onto my shorter wire. Then I'm going to take a jump ring. Basically, I'm going to do this in a quick way so that I don't have to keep um, dropping it all down. So this is just a bit of a speedier way to do this. Fingers crossed it works for me. Remembering that my 
uh long so obviously remember which wire you popped your bead on last so longer shorter and then longer and then you can count them as well so i actually used 24 small beads for the first section so if i drop all that down in theory oh please work it should oh okay nope see that's because i got overconfident so it didn't work because i missed my number it worked on this section but that's because i didn't follow my own advice so let's very quickly do that again. So you can, of course, I was just, it does work as long as you're paying attention, not talking and trying to tell somebody as well at the same time. So drop it on, push it up. I can see the next one that's needed is the, you've got a straight piece of bead and thread there. So I know that that's the next one to have the bead. Pop on the bead. And then pop on your jump ring. I never learn. Pop on my bead. Pop on my jump ring. You can, of course, do it so that you can see. My beads on here. So my beads going on here. So let's drop it all down. And what you'll see, push them together as they're going to bunch up so what we're doing is we're alternating so the bead is currently on my right hand side so I now need to put a jump ring on both of my wires so jump ring on both drop it down jump ring on both drop it down and then because this can turn you want to make sure it's easy enough to know if you hold the wires out the wire that is oopsie there we go the wire that has not got a bead on it last you'll be able to see it's plain little piece of wire you'll be able to take your the end of that pop on your bead now if you're doing a bracelet this is a lot easier because obviously you won't have really long lengths of wire but i am doing a necklace because i like to challenge myself so jump ring onto both Jumping onto both, bead onto the one that is plain. So you'll be able to see when you bunch them up, they'll be able to bunch up nicely together. Jumping on both, drop it down. And then you can see, as I said, for me, this is the one that needs the next bead. So take your next bead. And if, like I say, if you find a way that you can make it a bit quicker, then that's great. If not, sit down, pop a bit of TV on and make these. These are great, um, quick, easy makes. Um, if you're doing just like a, um, an, a bracelet as well, that really won't take long at all. Um, also, what was I going to say? You could actually make stretchy bracelets with these. As long as you, so you could actually take two strands of, of elastic and actually as long as the beads go on to the elastic which these ones will and your jump rings they would make great stretchy bracelets so lots of options so just bringing all these down so i'm going to kind of do like a mini version of the necklace so you can see there that we've got those and you would just continue doing that if you wanted a bracelet you could just continue down um, and then when you're ready just do that final bead onto both of those wires the same as we started just here and then finish off with your crimp but let's do a slightly different version so we're going to do imagine so on this one i'll write that we had 24 jump rings smaller jump rings so if I say two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty, two, four. 
So 24 of the smaller beads. And then I'm going to start to add a smaller and larger. So I'm going to alternate them now. So what I would try to do is keep, can you see on here that the, it, the right side has got that solo bead look here. So I would, what size beads am I using? Six mil and eight mil, Mina. So I'm now going to try to keep it all on the same um, so that the inside, so for me, this will become the inside of the necklace. I tend to work anti-clockwise. So I would be working this around to come back up like this. So for me, no problem. So for me, the inside is going to be the right hand side. So I'm going to make sure that my small bead goes on the inside. Sorry, it starts on the inside, which yeah, come here. I can see by here it's in place already. So if I show you, my small bead is on the inside. It's on the right. So now I'm going to switch it up and add a large, which is the eight mil, onto the left hand thread. Drop that down, pop a now. I'm going to now switch my jump ring size as well. So I'm only using the seven mil jump rings for the small section. As soon as I start to add the eight mil beads, I go up to the nine mil jump rings. Just because it visually I felt it looked better. I did, I did try it with the smaller size jump rings, and it, I just didn't feel it looked as nice. Obviously, that's just me, and you are of course welcome to have a go however you want it to look, play about with it. I think that's the beauty about this is that you can play about with the design. Um, so you'll see here, all of this section was done in with the small beads and the small jump rings. As Soon as I added the larger jump rings, I changed to a larger size, sorry, a larger um, bead, I changed to the larger jump rings. And then for the whole section, so even though it's small and large, I still stuck to the larger jump rings. And then when we switch it up to the same size, which is the two larger jump ring is um, both rows being the larger jump rings for the whole middle section before switching it back down and reversing to mirror on the opposite side. I just felt it looked nicer with the large jump rings. So larger jump ring in place. Remembering that the small jump ring, uh, small gemstone goes on the small bead, so it goes on the top. And then large jump ring and then large bead large jump ring you know it's cold in my house because my dogs are not in my studio with me you may notice a lack of snoring the savannah little scampette that she is has chosen to sit in the front room in the warmth in a blanket with her with her um lurcher sister I have been deserted. So just popping on a jump ring and then a large. And you just carry this pattern on with that slight different in size. So again, I worked mine out on the actual. So you can see there that's transitioning nicely. And it's good by having this on the board. It gives me that tension. It means that I can pull that nice and close and I don't lose the um you know it doesn't all come undone so and then going around remember you do get with these kits two bags of jump rings four strands of glass glitter beads and whoopsie and you get your findings and tiger tail to complete your piece as well which is great so i'm just building a little bit more and you get the two different colors which is lovely because they work great together but again you could just do it in two different colorways if you wanted to uh, enough for you to be able to make four um bracelets or two necklaces with leftovers 
I did a version of this when I first started being over 10 years ago. I'd love this side. A hundred percent. It is a it's a classic design, Jan. You're absolutely right. And I think what's great is to take that classic design and just play about with it a little bit. I just think it, you know, doing it in the necklace. Oh, see, I've missed one there. Now, a little tip. If like there, I realize I've missed a bead. It's not too far for me to have to undo it. But what I could do is at this point, take a jump ring, open it up and just add it. <laughs> it's a little bit cheaty, but it's doable. This is easier to fix than if you mess your bead pattern up. Ta -da, nobody will know. Um, yeah, you could definitely play about with this. And what I also wanted to do, but I didn't. So I'll do it now because why not? Was a Mobius um in the center center part just thought i would wonder how the mobius jump rings would look as those um spacers especially in that lovely larger size so there's a little mobius so let's have a little look at that it is a very classic easy design i just thought it was a great opportunity a really nice getting back to it getting your mojo back um easy start you know let's try it this way shall we there we go mobius is a bit trickier to catch so i just put a mobius on because i reckon i would love to do it I, again it's something i thought of after i had done the piece but imagine if you had like the uh necklace and then right in that very center part you just did a couple of little Mobiuses, just as that little final added detail. I just thought that would be really cool. Okay, just doing it. Now. And I'm not using my fingers to open jump rings at all, I promise. Okay, so there's another one. Make sure you get it sitting correctly. You know how we, we did Mobiuses before and how easy it is to uh, for them to flip themselves over or not quite work and two so i actually would do the mobiuses thinking about it when i'm just doing the doubles i say that because the large beads sorry because something to be aware of and we'll do this in a moment very quickly is what can happen whilst you're doing this section is this jump ring can flip over that small jump ring. I think I missed a jump ring about three beads up. No, they're all there. It's just very, it's just rotated round. They are all there though. They are all there. Thanks Camille, but they are there. Um. So yeah, so what I would say is that can happen, but that's only because it's not locked into place yet. As soon as you, you lock it into place, that doesn't happen anymore so just be careful when you're actually adding your jump rings on and then this is what happens as i said if it isn't closed properly so all of these are great little um add-ons for you to see why it's so important to prep your jump rings first of all okay so i'm going to go on to double and doubles and then we'll try that mobius when i say doubles and doubles i'm thinking of large and large now so I would do a little section of them mixed, small and large, and then we can go in and we can do the larger ones like so. And this would be my center part. It might be the one that just flipped, could have been. Also because, um, yeah, it, and that's, it's good because it makes you look and check that everything's okay. So one top tip again about this is don't sit and get complacent and be like, yeah, I'm on a happy pattern because it's very easy to make a few little mistakes with something like that happening. It's fixable. Jump rings are easier to fix than beading um, mistakes. So if you just put the jump, the bead on the wrong thread, that is unfixable. You have to go back and fix them. You have to take all your, your beads off and re-thread. But jump rings are a bit easier to fix because you can open and close them and readjust them so there is a little bit of leeway for you okay so i'm going to add i'm just trying the mobiuses now because i really wanted to try these mobiuses and see how they look okay so just see how they look by mobiuses for anyone who's not aware um it's just 
put in three jump rings together so that they form almost like a little flower so you get that little effect there so that's a really pretty way um traditionally this weave is done with just one jump ring but hey i don't follow tradition let's see that one little section how that let's do one more and then we'll come back down to it being single again i like to mess about with patterns a little bit sort of just take sections of each weave and see what you can come up with so again with this one what you could do hang on bear with me is you could do the main bit as the goddess style and then you could do maybe some rosary links down the side instead of it being beaded all the way along you know so it's lots of uh, potential playabouts with this design just do a couple more and then we'll be oopsie oops that didn't happen may have just landed on the floor but it's all good there we go and then we'll just quickly go back to singles just so we can see and so for the necklace as i said you would just um do those different sections and then mirror it on the opposite way i liked to use my uh bead map and then map it out and then i kind of go by measurements um so i'll map out the first side on the bead map and then i can count how many beads i need to mirror it properly on the other side so if i've gotten halfway across to on um, my bead board from sort of like my nine to my zero point i can um count the beads see how many i use for each section and then i can mirror that hopefully that makes sense what i'm saying um okay and then you would just go back into your pattern so let's have a little look let's move this off of here and move this away from here and have a little look at our sort of sample piece so you've got that lovely sort of and again because you've got those two color tones on these beads is it me or have you missed the jump ring a few beads up angela you said it as well no uh this one's skipped down and that's because i didn't prep my jump rings before i started but that's but no no none have um none have been missed that i can see maybe maybe i've missed one there no yes no yes that one it's it's moved and this is why it's important to do your jump rings no i haven't missed any um i placed that down they are all in place um you still see the missing jump ring where ah there 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 it is i love that we found it in the end easy to fix pop your jump ring in and one <laughs> another top tip there you go thank you is that better is that the one there we go and then that final top tip is to triple check everything before you lock the end of your design in so go around the whole thing make sure you haven't missed any like obviously i did um but also you're not going to be um you're not going to be talking and looking up at a screen you're going to be focusing on what you're doing um, but it does go to show how even an easy design is easy to mess up if you're not paying full attention <laughs> uh, but yeah there you go um i've missed a bead here um so you can see but you can see it with the mobius effect inside as well that looks really pretty um so just for you to see the two different effects of of the um design but that's how it goes through that's your small sides and you can mix those sizes up then you can go straight into those doubles um, and bring it all the way around I promise you when i am paying 100 percent attention it does come out okay um you can see this one here i took my time with this one um and i really did um plot this one out it actually took longer than i thought because i was making sure i was happy with it so as i said if you have this on a bead beading mats um i went around i think these started at sort of the three inch mark to the zero and then i counted back and mirrored it you think you like it with just the one bead yeah uh, well 100 percent play about with it have it so that you've got some sections with one bead i mean it does look really pretty with just one bead so you could curve it around a little bit 
play about with it it's a really great versatile idea so um anyway <laughs> i hope you uh i hope that that was okay i'm sorry oh, we had a bit of technical issues but we got there in the end hopefully that came across okay and you can see it okay um and i'm looking at the youtube it does look like it's gotten a bit clearer now so that's great i will try and get a second light the next time um remember you can make four bracelets or um two necklaces try this on stretchy brace or stretchy elastic have a stretchy bracelet it's great so much potential i am going to go now because i've got b club in literally less than an hour um i will be back with you in two weeks time so until then have a lovely lovely cold chilly day and i will see you all very soon stay safe and stay stay warm okay